In this video, I'll show how I made my new stabilizer setup, complete with a 12 inch front bar and a riser mounted sidebar. Borrowing from the target archery world, this setup is intended to improve my shooting accuracy and balance, rather than just hold a wrist sling in place with a little bit of vibration dampening. For design requirements, longer is better, provided the length isn't so great that it destroys mobility in the woods. It needs to be stiff so that the inertia from the weights provides immediate response and the shaft needs to be light so that nearly all the weight is at the ends. That increases the lever arm and can actually allow me to achieve greater stabilization while minimizing the increase of the overall mass weight of the bow. That can be very important when carrying on a long high exertion hunt. My sidebar is designed so that I can move the weights up or down as well as in or out from the bow independently. I haven't built in any quick releases because quite frankly my bow is rarely going in and out of a case. Let's go over the components of the front bar. There were a couple components that I machined from 7075 aluminum stock, but for everything that I machined I found an equivalent off the shelf component so that anyone watching can follow along without any expensive equipment. The shaft itself can either be aluminum or carbon fiber in my opinion. Solid wood is too heavy and PVC isn't stiff enough. Aluminum is way cheaper than carbon fiber, but carbon fiber is also slightly stiffer and slightly lighter for the same dimensions. Carbon fiber is also quieter when bumped and not as icy cold to the touch when hunting in cold weather. That's why it's so often used in high-end stabilizers and the black finish looks cool. Aluminum comes in different alloys with different strengths and costs. Fortunately, most alloys have about the same stiffness. That means the cheap architectural grade 6063 aluminum tubing that you can find at your local hardware store for less than five bucks will work just fine. The downsides to aluminum are that it's louder when you bump it against something, it's got a shiny unnatural appearance, and when the weather is cold, it's cold. I chose aluminum for my stabilizer due to the cost and the fact that I can easily epoxy the components together with JB Weld. To overcome the downsides to aluminum, I'll wrap the surface with stealth strips. For size, I chose 3 quarter inch outside diameter tubing. As you increase the tubing diameter, you increase the stiffness exponentially, but you also increase the effects of a side wind pushing you off target. Three quarters of an inch allowed a decent balance while also mating perfectly with a very important component. That component is a tube end weld nut with a 5 16 by 24 internal thread. This part from McMaster Car cost $5.30, but it allows you to attach the three quarter inch tube and epoxy a 5 16 by 24 socket screw on the inside. This vital connection allows you to make a rock solid connection to the bow. My tube end weld nut was machined, but it matches all the important dimensions that the McMaster part has. The only difference is that mine is aluminum, while the McMaster part is steel. For the far end of the stabilizer, there are a few options. You could use another one of the tube end weld nuts, or you could epoxy in a threaded end connector, like this one which is made for 5 8 inch inside diameter carbon fiber tube, but the part itself is aluminum. 5 8 inch inside diameter carbon fiber is close to the equivalent to the 3 quarter inch outside diameter aluminum I'm using. And this component is actually what I modeled my machine part after. A third and inexpensive option is to use a quarter 20 screw mount weld nut coupled with a 5 16 inch hex nut. If you ream the inside of the hex nut and epoxy it to the shaft of the weld nut, you create a surface area that can bond to the inside of the aluminum tube. Although I didn't use this idea for my personal stabilizer, I did build one up just to confirm that the double shear joint design does work and is solid. For the sidebar, the bow end is a bit different. I machined a male clevis to attach to the bow itself. It's very similar to this one right here. Mine has threads built into the through hole, but this one would still work fine in conjunction with the lock nut. For the piece that attaches to the stabilizer rod, I machined a piece similar to this single sided clevis connector. For some reason, this website only makes this part for half inch and three quarter inch inside diameter tubes. So if you wanted to use this exact part from this website, you'd probably need to downsize to a 5 8 inch outside diameter aluminum for the sidebar. Onto the build itself. I marked the aluminum so that the length from the bow to the backside of the weights would be 12 inches and cut with a pipe cutter to keep the cut square. Then I deburred the cut by sanding the outside and twisting a deburring tool in the inside. You can really see here how perfectly that fine thread 5 16 inch socket screw fits in the tube end weld nut. The length of my bolt is 1.5 inches. I mixed up the JB Weld, lathered it around the head of the socket screw and some of the adjacent threads, 
and then I screwed it into the weld nut. I made sure the epoxy filled all the remaining space, and then I let it cure for 24 hours. To prepare the tube and the weld nut for attachment to one another, I first cleaned with some acetone. Then, I sanded the outside of the weld nut with 60 grit sandpaper and roughed up the inside of the tube with a small file. This helps give the epoxy something to hold on to. It's really important to bond quickly after exposing that fresh aluminum under the surface. In order to ensure that the bond was square, I threaded the weld nut into the bow on a level surface, coated with a JB weld, and then pushed the tube on, making sure to twist and push the epoxy around both surfaces. Since there's a little bit of play, I made sure the tube was first centered left and right, then I knelt down to ensure the up and down was centered before adding a support to prop it in place for the 24 hour cure. I also bonded the threaded end connector to the far side of the stabilizer at this point. A little tape around the edge ensures that the components don't slide around during the cure. You certainly have options for stabilizer weights. I decided to go with the cheaper hardware store fender washers. Instead of using quarter inch washers, I went undersized to 3 16 inch ones. That's because a quarter inch washer actually has a hole that's slightly larger than a quarter inch, which allows some room for rattling. With the 3 16 inch washers, I was able to ream out the holes to exactly a quarter inch with a drill bit, which will ensure a tight, rattle-free weight once screwed in place. One ounce of weight is very close to four washers. For the finishing touch on the front bar, I added the stealth strips. These camouflage the bright aluminum, and the soft micro fleece deadens noise and provides warmth to the touch in cold weather. Now, for the sidebar, I used JB Weld to attach the clevis and the threaded rod end. Here's how I attached the single-sided clevis connector to the bow. It's just a one inch diameter fender washer on each side of the riser with a socket head screw holding everything together. You'd think that this would either scratch the finish of the bow or come loose easily. I was a bit worried myself, but in the time it's taken me to edit this video, I've put hundreds of arrows through my finished setup without needing to retighten a single bolt anywhere and the riser finish has been holding up just fine. You can put the sidebar wherever you want to on the riser and I've settled with mine currently in the bottom hole for a two piece stabilizer. The nice thing about using socket head screws for everything is that you'll likely already have an Allen wrench set on hand for your sight. Now, adjusting your stabilizer will take some time, and there's different opinions on how to do it. Ideally, you'll let your pin float and shot placement tell you what needs to be done. Having the bow balanced perfectly side to side and front to back while it rests in your hand can be a good starting point, but it's what happens at full draw with good form that really matters. I've linked an article below that does a good job of explaining what some common issues could be and how to fix them. If the bow is acting too front heavy, you can reduce the front weight, add rear weight, or position the sidebar closer into your bow. If your bubble level doesn't naturally want to sit level at full draw without your input, you can move the sidebar in or out. If you're grouping well but have flyers that go to one side, moving the sidebar in or out could help. It's all a big balancing act, which is why it can take a while. As you can see in my shot, I'm shooting well, but the bow tips back a bit right at the shot. I can still experiment to have the bow sit dead at the shot before falling forward, but ultimately I will still need to have it behave and balance well at full draw. Anyways, I really hope this video was somewhat helpful and enjoyable to watch. If you have any questions, I'll do my best to answer them down in the comments below. Please click like, share, and subscribe to my channel for more DIY videos. Thanks for watching.